three years ago, I gave a learning to talk at the event in Tokyo. I shared about my personal experiences in terms of what it's meant to be a queer person in the field of education. And I invited the audience of educators to talk more about what it might mean to support LGBTQ plus students, families, and educators. And in the weeks and months after that talk, people reached out to say they wanted to do that. The Be a Better Ally podcast was born out of folks saying yes to more dialogue and yes to more questioning about what a truly inclusive school is. And I'm so grateful to every single one of the guests who came on and shared their insight, their questions, their wisdom. The Be a Better Ally podcast has been a way to showcase the remarkable work that educators around the world are doing when it comes to co-creating more LGBTQ plus inclusive schools. So as I reflect on those conversations now, in the middle of a global pandemic, it dawns on me that there has never been a better time to celebrate queer wisdom. Why? Queer wisdom is not fixed, but embraces change. Queer wisdom is about the discovery and rediscovery of our identities. And queer wisdom is intersectional and steeped in valuing community. And yet, for too long, it has been absent from our curriculum and from our professional learning spaces. We have to ask ourselves in what ways LGBTQ plus people are celebrated and seen in the curriculum in our schools, not just for a special event and not just for an awareness project, but simply because curriculum is meant to represent the reality that we've always been here. Too often I've heard folks speak of building safe schools or of having a teachable moment, and we need more than that. We need something beyond safety. We need a multidisciplinary approach that lasts beyond the passing moment. We don't just need it because it's right. We need it because in these remarkably difficult times, queer wisdom has so much to teach. Members of the LGBTQ plus community have long been creative thinkers. We're constantly reimagining what society and school could be if we would just let go of the norms that divide and we would say no to the notion that family or love can only look one way. So let's look to three examples from this community of creative thinkers. First, from James Baldwin, I quote, for nothing is fixed, the sea rises, the light fails, lovers cling to each other and children cling to us. The moment we cease to hold each other, the sea engulfs us and the light goes out, end quote. During the global pandemic, we've been reminded again and again, we need each other. And in a workplace and a world that's always in flux, we have to find ways to sustain that connection. Up next is Johanna Hedva. Quote, my favorite word of the moment is consociation. It means cooperative relationships that are antagonistic, but that work together because of this friction, end quote. We cannot simply assume we will all react to change and turmoil the same. We need to become better listeners in debate. And that means we need to see conflict and friction as an opportunity to focus not on being right, but on being right with our community. Lastly, Audre Lorde, quote, Revolution is not a one-time event, end quote. The revolution to make schools truly compassionate spaces that champion learners is ongoing, and it's up to us to sustain that revolution. So I invite you to seek out wisdom from those of us who have for a very long time known and understood that change is needed and that change can be healing. Here's the thing. You've actually had that opportunity every year. What opportunity am I talking about? Pride Month. And the planning of Pride is happening now. In every single subject, in every single grade, there is a place for Pride. If your school has not made the path to that place an easy journey yet, please see this moment as the time you were officially invited to look for it. So can we make Pride 2022 a true exploration of queer wisdom? And might that wisdom be a part of the healing that we so desperately need this year? Can we learn from one another about how other schools have approached pride? Can we connect students across time zones? The question no longer needs to be can. The pandemic has taught us the better question is simply where and when. 
And a potential answer to that question is here, queerwisdom.com. Now, before you make your way over to that space, let's remember a few things. For too long, Pride has been a month that's framed as a time to disrupt queer phobia. And Pride has more potential than that. If your school is only focused on protecting queer people, but not from learning from a history as old as time from every corner around the globe, your school has some learning to do. We are here at Learning To because we know that when we have learning to do, we have to come together. So in the tradition of Learning To, I invite you to queerwisdom.com to help schools cultivate a tradition with, for, and of pride. This is not a teachable moment. This is a teachable movement. Thank you.